Quinn. Quinn. Any luck with the sample yet? Quinn. Quinn, wake up. What? Jesus, Pete. You scared the hell out of me. God, what the hell are you doing here this late? Well, I was holding all up, Quinn. I wanted to snuggle. Oh, fuck you. Any progress yet? Yes, actually. I've calculated an approximate location of the spacecraft. Don't ask me to explain. It took way too long. But I know that the ship's outer structure was made of osmium. So? So? That is a damn rare element. A spaceship made out of it suggests that these people have an abundance of it. Assuming that life-bearing planets are chemically the same as ours, this ship is an anomaly. This means one of two things. That this planet is completely different from ours, and I should know better than to assume anything having to do with space, or that this civilization has discovered a way to maintain and take advantage of one of the universe's most rare elements and use it to build the vehicles that let them fly through space and also to achieve ecological efficiency. Of course, I'm just assuming. Okay, but why is this important, Quinn? This means they have a radio, or at least something that picks it up. I don't know what they call it on their planet, but they have something. They have to. Quinn, you son of a bitch, you're a genius. I love you. Okay. Okay, this is good. Uh, we'll think of a message and we'll send it later tonight. This is good. This is good. Get out of here. Wow, Mr. Quinn. Hey, I missed it too, Pete. What have we got? Here. Here, just take this quickly, Quinn. Come on. Right, Jesus. Give it to me. No readings. 
No nothing. No data. Compared to all known vehicle records. Pete, what the hell is this thing? Will you just look it up, please? Just tell me what it is. It's nothing, Quinn. Can we please just focus? Pete, this didn't come from a... So why the hesitation? Because, Quinn, I don't know for sure and I can't. I was in a field and I saw a bright light and I was half asleep and I know we have this this thing, but I don't know for sure right now, so can we please just focus and not get ahead of ourselves? You're right. Okay, I'll pull up some more records and we'll keep going. Get up. Mm. Get up. Uh, Good morning, sunshine. We come in. Well, it's a bit cliche. If that's what you want, then all right. Okay, grab the microphone. Got it. Okay, speak. Be coming, Pete. Okay. Keep saying it. We come in peace. Okay, good. Keep saying it. We come in peace. Okay, plug this in here. Plug it in. Set it up to seven hertz. Okay, I'm going to flip the switch, and on the count of three, that's when you can stop talking. Keep saying it. We come in peace. Okay, one. Two, three. Oh, shit. Okay, hang on. Aha. Okay. What happened? We're sending a message to space, Pete. This is powerful stuff here. A power surge is inevitable. Okay, try it again. Message sent. Okay, so how long we thinking? I don't know. A few weeks, a few months, I really can't tell you. How are they going to understand us? They aren't. But that's not the point, Pete. This local supercluster is a really big place. We just have to give it some time. Just come back in a few days, okay? Hey, we're doing this. Yeah, we are. Eureka. Come here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Find something, sit down, shut up, and listen to this. I don't know how we received the message so quickly, or better yet, how they received ours. But either way, here it is. The proof of life. Now, I've done some digging, as usual. And I found out that this is not the first time that these aliens have contacted Earth. The CIA has received three messages on three separate occasions. Once in 1955, and again in 1987, and then once more in 2003. I'm guessing the CIA has done some research regarding this language. And I'm willing to bet that if I dig a little bit more, I can find these government files. They exist.
Let's do it. outside for a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Quinn? Dear Mr. Huffinger and Mr. Ramon, it has come to our attention that an unauthorized radio signal has been transmitted from this location on the morning on November 28, 2013 at 0600 hours. The content of your message has been obtained by our agency and is as follows. Hello, we come in peace. Besides your illegal unauthorized radio broadcast, the wording of your message has led our agency to believe that your men are attempting to contact extraterrestrial life and we warn you that these actions are a direct violation of national law and global law. If your actions continue, our agency will be forced to intervene. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Central Intelligence Agency. Washington, D.C. <laughs> What's so funny? Do you know what this means? This means we've got the government's attention. This means we're doing something big. Something right. <laughs> You're insane. They didn't send an errand boy. Obviously, we aren't a priority. Yet. So we just keep going until we are. Precisely. Ken Foster. Ken, hey, just wanted to wish you good luck on your first case. Oh man, how are you doing? Oh, fantastic. Calls, paperwork, wonderful stuff. You'll be away from that desk job soon enough. Yeah, yeah, look, just be careful out there. Don't think I have anything to worry about in this assignment, Greg. I know, I read the case file. Sounds like some left-wing nuts, anti-government bullshit. Ah, shit, the boss man's coming around, gotta go. Good luck. Congrats on the assignment, bud. Oh, yeah, thanks, Greg. See ya. Ken Foster, FBI. Quinn Ramon, pleasure. We've had reports of unauthorized radio transmissions from this address. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? Look, isn't this more like a local police job? Not when there's government technology involved, son. Wait, 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 did you just call me son? Don't give me that son crap. I mean, how old are you, 23, 24? How much older than me can you possibly be? And that squirrel on your face isn't fooling anyone. Oh my God, the audacity of some people. That's the problem with the world today. Everyone's just out Sir, to get... do you mind if I come in and observe this little operation you have going? Sure, sure, go right ahead. <clears throat> Who's this? Uh, Pete Heffinger. Huh. Well, 
This is government technology. Very old. Where'd you get hold of this? My god, the questions don't end. Look, some people like rocks, others they like coins. Me, I like technology. Nothing else to it. That doesn't answer my question. When you collect enough technology, you stop looking at what it is. I didn't even realize I was government grade. I put it up for decoration. Can I go in that decorator's garage? Well, <clears throat> none of it seems to be working. But I will be back. Wasn't all of that on when we fell asleep? I knew someone was coming, so I had to turn it off. Should have guessed. Well, we're a priority now. They sent their errand boy. Now what? We continue. Right. I have some good news. What's that? After hours of research last night, it seems that the message that we received is the same that the CIA received. I found a file in which the message was written down using the letters of the alien alphabet and then translated into English. I guess they figured it out somehow. Here, I wrote it down. Now, the file was corrupted, so I couldn't get the full thing, but I was able to translate a few letters of the message. Now, note that the alien language has four extra letters in ours, so that means we can't be 100% accurate. But we have the basic gist. All I know now is the first three letters are N, E, I. The file doesn't have a full translation. So I guess that means more digging. Precisely. So this is where it happened? Yeah. Right here. Amazing. I wonder why they chose this place. Interesting. Maybe their message has an answer. Got it. Neighbors. That's the entire message. Neighbors. Well, that doesn't sound threatening at all. It almost sounds friendly. Well, somehow they know we're here. They've sent this message three other times. But the CIA isn't allowing direct communication between our two planets. Strange to me. They're curious about us? Well, yes. I mean, have you ever thought about it? You know, to them, like, we're the aliens. But I'm just not understanding something. The message clearly says neighbors, but no one's ever heard about it. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, we're sitting on the edge of the greatest human discovery in history, something that could launch our society into years ahead of its time. I mean, Efficient space travel, clean energy. We have to send a message. You know what, Pete? You're absolutely right. To hell with the government. We're gonna be the first people to do this, and we're gonna send this message. Look what I've got. Slides. Not just any slides. You know that thrift store down on Franklin Street? The one owned by Terry? Well, I was in there and I was asking him if he had any items related to UFO or space. And then he pulls a box out from the back. 
Now it's filled with junk, but then he pulls this box of slides out from the box. And he tells me, get this, that it used to belong to his friend who worked with the CIA in 1955. He told me it was related to some UFO research his friend was doing. The aliens. Yes, look at this stuff. Star charts, planet locations, language translations. I mean, the CIA had more info on this stuff than we thought. Surprised they left a slip. Hand me the box. What's that? It's from 1963. Put it in. Dr. Darrell Jones, November 25th, 1963. Entry number 204. It has been eight years since initial contact with the extraterrestrials. Our latest evidence, 32B, has been examined and archived. We have made recent contact again through our specialists, using years of examination of their language. And after deliberation and discussion, there is a unanimous vote to shut down operation and communication with the life forms. The evidence shows no sign of threat from the extraterrestrials, therefore we feel no motivation for any course of action. There's a unanimous estimate among our team of an unstable reaction from the population. Even I have my doctoral stature and taken aback by the advancement of these life forms. This intelligence is made for future generations. Humanity is simply not ready for direct interaction with the life out of our comprehension. This marks a horizon for all of mankind. However, before we cross the threshold, we must progress ourselves, independent of external sources. I have faith in the evolving intelligence of man. My hopes aim that our findings are recovered in years to come, to be used by a more civilized, progressed, a more unified human race. Bullshit. I mean, they had an opportunity and they just threw it away. I mean, this is the future of humanity we're talking about here. Right, Pete? Pete? He's right, Quinn. What? We're not ready. Pete, we've been working at this for days. What the hell do you mean we're not ready? We have all the resources here that we need. No, I mean we're not ready. People, humans, we're not ready. Well, I'm ready. Oh, come on, Quinn. You know you're smart enough to know that's not that simple. I'm smart enough to know to take an opportunity when it presents itself, Pete. This government flake from 50 years ago kept valuable information from us. From humanity. Oh, since when have you cared about humanity? You spend every minute of every day in your garage cooped up in front of your antiques. And what the hell do you do? I slave myself away in here every day while you go on your little bike and look at the sky. I do all the work here, huh? What have you done? What have you I done? I saw them! They came to me. They called to me. Oh, so that makes you the supreme being, huh? God's messenger, is that it? No, Quinn. This isn't a good idea. I just have a feeling we're not ready for this. Nobody is. Would you just stop and think for a second? Think about the consequences. Mass hysteria, the military. Do you want to start a war? A galactic war? We can't even fight our own war. Then what, Pete? In another 50 years? No. This is happening right here, right now. Would you just listen to me? Pete Heffinger, Quinn Ramon, you're in violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, as well as in violation of federal and international computer laws. If you allow me to take your equipment now, you will avoid arrest and the charges will be dropped.
Take our equipment under what authority? Under the authority of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We bumped your garage. We know about your operation. We gained enough evidence and I was granted a warrant to confiscate your equipment. Now please, step away from the workbench. <laughs> you government fuck! I'm sending this message! Quinn, he's got a gun! Shut up, Pete! This is bigger than you, or me, or all the rest of us! And I'm not letting this asshole stop the future! <laughs> Our aliens rule art in the heavens. Our Martian. Our little green man. We're anxious to make contact. To ask diverse questions about the heavendom you hail from. To discuss the whole shebang of the beginning and end. The pre-Big Bang and time before you forget the why and the lie of thy first place friend to say welcome. <laughs> 